bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. So in honor of Jane Austen July, I have gone to the library and gotten a lot of nonfiction books reading something about Jane Austen or about the time period of Jane Austen, the Georgian or Regency era, is one of the challenges for Jane Austen July. If you guys do not know what I'm talking about and do not know about Jane Austen July, please, please check out my announcement video or Katie from Books and Things' announcement video as well because we are very excited to be hosting this readathon where we focus on reading books by and about Jane Austen in the month of July. But I'm going to put these down so I can go through them one by one and talk to you about all of the lovely nonfiction selections I have taken out from the library. So before I get into the nonfiction library haul, I'm going to discuss the three nonfiction books that have been sitting on my shelves. The first one of which is my priority for Jane Austen July, and that is What Matters in Jane Austen, 20 Crucial Puzzles Solved by John Mullen. John Mullen is an eminent Austen scholar, and I cannot wait to hear what he thinks matters in Jane Austen. So in this book, Mullen asks and answers some very specific questions about what goes on in Jane Austen's novels, and in doing so, he actually reveals the inner workings of the novel's greatness. So I'm excited for this one. It's one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time now. The next one I have is Jane Austen's England, Daily Life in the Georgian and Regency Periods by Roy and Leslie Atkins. I believe Katie has the UK version of this one. I think it has a different title, but we plan on buddy reading it as well. Uh, this is simply about Jane Austen's time period. Um, it offers a new view of the great novelist's world in a wide-ranging and richly detailed social history of English culture in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. So this is more of a history kind of book, a little less about Jane Austen, a little more about the time period, but what better way to learn about Jane Austen than to learn about the time period, so I'm really excited for this one. Next one I have is Jane's Fame by Claire Harmon, How Jane Austen Conquered the World. So this one is more about Jane Austen's rejections and how she became famous, why she is still famous today, why do we still read her even 200 plus years after her death. It's really exciting to see that literary trajectory and why we still care about Jane Austen. So on to the library haul portion of the video, what you guys have been waiting for. The next book I picked up was actually recommended by one of my subscribers in the comments of the announcement video and I checked it out and it looks really interesting and that is A Jane Austen Education, How Six Novels Taught Me About Love, Friendship, and the Things That Really Matter by William, I'm not going to try and pronounce the last name, I'll link it down below. This book was written by an Austen scholar and it apparently weaves his experiences about reading the six main Jane Austen books with what those novels actually can teach us about the world around us and continue to teach us today. So I'm really quite excited for this one. The back actually, you can't see I'm sure, but the back actually has each novel broken down by section and says sort of a little lesson that he's taken from the novel. So I will just go with the most popular probably, Pride and Prejudice, you aren't born perfect, you are born with a whole novel's worth of errors ahead of you, but making mistakes is the only way to grow up. Being right might get you a pat on the head, but being wrong can help you find out who you really are. So I think the back is a little reductive, but I'm really interested to hear what he has to say in the entirety of the novel. Nonfiction book. This is not a novel. The next one I think will be a really fun book, and that is Among the Jainites, A Journey Through the World of Jane Austen Fandom by Deborah Yaffe. Now, this one is written by a journalist, a mother of two, and a voracious reader who travels into the world of Austen fandom. Um, so this is about the different kinds of Jane Austen fans she meets. They say, they walk among us in their bonnets and empire waist gowns, clutching their souvenir tote bags and battered paperbacks. The Janeites, Jane Austen's legion of devoted fans, who are these obsessed admirers whose passion has transformed Austen from classic novelist to pop culture phenomenon? Deborah Yaffe, journalist and Janeite, sets out to answer this question exploring the remarkable endurance of Austen's stories, the unusual zeal that their author inspires, and the striking cross-section of lives she has touched. So this one seems like a fun and interesting quirky little book. Next I found in my library 
What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew, From Fox Hunting to Whist, The Facts of Daily Life in 19th Century England by Daniel Poole. This one I initially was a little worried about because it includes both Jane Austen and Dickens, and I was wondering, you know, how much will it really tell me when it completes these two authors who are very different together. But I think this novel, novel, I keep saying that, these are not novels, these are nonfiction books, you guys. Um, this nonfiction book, I think, is really well researched based on the introduction and the first, like, two pages that I actually read. It talks about all of these different things in everyday life in the 19th century that I may have just heard about briefly or don't even know about. So it starts out, was the Chancery Court really as bad as Charles Dickens made it out to be? Did husbands really sell their wives at fairs, as Henchard does in The Mayor of Casterbridge? So I guess it talks about Hardy, too. Um, what is pudding, and why was it such a favorite English dish? That one, I think the Great British Bake Off actually taught me a little bit at this point. What was the order of precedence? Does an earl rank higher than a baronet? Katie from Books and Things actually explained the entire system to me, um, but it would be great to have a refresher on that. So. This seems like it's going to be a really interesting book full of really interesting topics. It says, 19th century England was long ago and far away. Anglophiles and readers of Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, George Eliot, Anthony Trollope, the Brontes, and Thomas Hardy knew that the intricacies of English daily life are a puzzle. This unique book, which decodes the rituals of the aristocrat and the commoner, is a godsend. Not a history and not a collection of dry footnotes. This is a book of engaging and vivid description that transports you to the 19th century England and reveals the facets of daily life as Dickens and Jane Austen and Trollope and their readers actually experience them. So I think that this is probably going to be a must read for any 19th century fan. I really want to read this one too. I really want to read all the nonfiction books and I know that based on my TBR, I don't have time to read all the nonfiction books about Jane Austen and her time period, but I really want to, you guys. And what nonfiction haul would be complete without some good biographies about Jane Austen? So, first I have Jane Austen, A Life by Claire Tomlin. Uh, Katie actually read this book and she said that it was excellent and a wonderful biography, uh, but that she didn't always jive with Claire Tomlin's literary analysis when she tried to actually analyze the books. Um, that being said, I feel like I need a really nice history of Jane Austen, a nice biography of her actual life. Next is The Real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things by Paula Byrne. This is another biography, but this one takes a little bit of a different twist. It actually focuses on forces that would have shaped Jane Austen's interior life. So it focuses on her father's religious faith, her mother's aristocratic pedigree, her eldest brother's adoption, um, her other brother's naval and military experiences, but it does all of this through a highly innovative technique. It actually begins each chapter by evoking an object that would have had significance to Jane Austen. I think that's a really clever and creative way to do a biography, and it seems like it would be a really interesting read. Not to be confused with the last biography, the next biography is another really innovative way to do biographies. It is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. Um, the front cover has a quote uh, by Amanda Foreman. It says, This is my kind of history, carefully researched but so vivid that you are convinced Lucy Worsley was actually there at the party or the parsonage. This book actually looks at Jane Austen's life through the lens of her home the rooms and the interior spaces that she inhabited and what was important about them and how those shaped her life. I think this is a really brilliant way to look at Jane Austen and her works and her life because so much of her novels take place in an interior setting, take place in a drawing room, take place over a dinner table, um, and it would be interesting to hear how those interior spaces really shape Jane Austen's life. So another one that I did not actually pick up from the library because I did pick it up from the library before and I have read it in its entirety and I actually have done a whole review video on it and that is Helena Kelly's The Secret Radical. I thought that book was very engaging, a really interesting read. I disagreed with many of the things that Helena Kelly had to say. I disagreed with many of her readings of Jane Austen's works, but it still was a really exciting read, and you can tell that the author is very passionate in her own way about Jane Austen. So I highly recommend that you check out the book if you're interested in some 
critical debate within your own mind, um, or my review video if you're interested in hearing more about it. And then I have some more books that I don't have in physical copy with me, but uh, they were either already out on hold for someone else at the library or I just wasn't able to get my hands on them. But I did some research, they sound like interesting topics. Um, I'll read the titles and the authors and I'll link them down below so you can take a look if they sound more interesting than the books that I already recommended. In case you don't have enough nonfiction to check out already, Jane Austen, Feminism and Fiction by Margaret Kirkham. A Truth Universally Acknowledged, 33 Great Writers on Why We Read Jane Austen, edited by Susan Carson. Jane Austen Cover to Cover, which is 200 Years of Classic Covers by Margaret C. Sullivan. That one I've actually seen featured in Emma, the Bookish Princess's videos before. It looks gorgeous. Um, if my library did have that one, I would have picked it up and just looked through it because it has, it, it basically studies Jane Austen's novels through the cover designs over the years, and I think that's just fascinating from an art history standpoint, from a Jane Austen standpoint, from a lot of different viewpoints. There is a book called Fashion in the Time of Jane Austen by Sarah J. Downing. That one sounds brilliant. I love learning about history through other means, so through art, through novels, through fashion. Another book, Jane Austen, Women, Politics, and the Novel by Claudia L. Johnson. Um, that one sounds a little more analytic, but it could be a very good read. You could check it out. Um, and the last one I have written down is The Bedside, Bathtub, and Armchair Companion to Jane Austen by Carol Adams, Douglas Buchanan, and Kelly Gesch. So I hope you found something interesting today in my nonfiction haul. Please let me know in the comments down below if any of these sound exciting to you and which book you plan on reading for the nonfiction challenge. He makes ten